Unfortunately, there's not many clinical trials for drugs for Mycenae gravis. A lot of the drug regimens we use are uh, based on physician experts or um, based on our own uh, experience with disease and with patients because many of the medications we use are actually designed for alternate um, illnesses and we have modified them for use. So there's no real consensus on how to treat and it's really um, physician dependent. Um, there are um, expert consensuses on guidelines on how to treat, but every patient's different because their symptoms are different and their symptoms fluctuate. And so uh, physicians have to uh, address each patient individually and treat their diseases individually. Um, there are, the mainstay of treatments involves the use of something called mesnon or acetylcholine receptor um, inhibitors um, that help manage um, fluctuations, um, and it's taken four times a day. That's the mainstay of treatment that we use initially. It doesn't work for everyone. After that, we move on to immune modulation because most of the diseases are autoimmune diseases. So the immune modulation consists of steroids or IVIG or plasma exchange or other immune modulating agents that were designed for other illnesses. There is also a role of thymectomy in certain patients with myasthenia gravis, which is part of treatment management. Um, in terms of drug development, there's over 19 drugs currently in the pipeline for use and management um, and, and hope to help modify the disease. There's even a vaccine currently in development for help modification of the disease. Once I was diagnosed, I was immediately put on mestinon, which I call my regulator. Um, I take it every four hours, every day, for just general function, just walking, talking, being able to eat, things like that. And I was also put on prednisone, which is a steroid that I guess gives you a extra boost in order to walk longer and talk longer and things of that nature. So the landscape's always changing. Um, there was actually a recent drug approval in October 2017, which was wonderful um, for patients who are refractory myasthenia gravis. Those are the patients who are hardest to treat, the patients who don't respond to the available armament that we have right now. Um, those drugs that we have available work well for some patients, but there is a good 5 to 10% of patients who just don't respond, and they're our hardest to treat patients, so the ones who do the worst and really suffer the most. Um, and there's a lot of drugs being aimed at treating those patients. It's very exciting that there was a new drug approved. It was the first one in a while specifically approved for myasthenia gravis, which is wonderful.